Welcome everyone, Questine here on Serious Gaming with a discussion about World of Warcraft Shadowlands. And to answer a question that people have been asking me quite a bit over the last week, whether or not Shadowlands is worth playing as an expansion. Well, to my money it is, but it does come with certain caveats. I think overall there is a great deal of enjoyment to be found and I think Blizzard has certainly taken quite a few steps in a positive direction, but there are still problems. Uh, with Shadowlands, Blizzard has decided to resolve some of the biggest issues that plagued both Legion and Battle for Azeroth in particular. See, with Legion and continuing with BFA, Blizzard decided to introduce an endless grind that felt really like mand a mandatory daily grind that you had to do on your characters in order to stay competitive with other players. So you had to uh, farm continuously for artifact power and you had to farm for legendaries, for random legendaries because of the randomized loot generation, Titan Forge, Dwarf Forge. Now, the effect this had on the game and the community was overwhelmingly negative. It was so in Legion. Blizzard put its foot down and continued keeping with this system in Battle for Azeroth, which to be honest was one of the principal reasons why I didn't play Battle for Azeroth, the first expansion that, uh, or the first period in WoW that I didn't touch at all. And it was really because of the system. And because Battle for Azeroth looked to me before launch, and I turned out to be correct on this, Battle for Azeroth seemed like an expansion that had a lot of the weak same weaknesses, same problems as Legion did, specifically because of artifact power and loot generation, but none of the strengths, none of the interesting storytelling, with obviously dealing with the Burning Legion being one of the principal storylines in, War in Warcraft in general, not just World of Warcraft, but in Warcraft in general, even going back as far as Warcraft 1. So experiencing that storyline, dealing with the Legion, dealing with the class order, whole storyline, etc. It was very interesting and it was very compelling. Not so much with BFA. So what's the point? Now BFA, I think the conclusion of a large portion of the community has been that BFA has been an overwhelming disaster for Blizzard. So Blizzard took a step back and decided, okay, we're getting rid of the endless grind. We're getting rid of the randomized loot generation. We're going to go back to how things were and we're going to add new mechanics in place as well to make things more interesting like Torghast and the Maw, but more on that in a bit. Suffice it to say, however, they've abandoned what's been bad on retail over the last couple of years, what's been really, really bad because with randomized loot generation with items with a, a player being able to get a legendary item from a no effort quest in the open world. Uh, that's best in slot for pretty much most of the game, if not all of the game, dependent on your luck, then, well, that just completely uh, ruins the whole purpose of the game, ruins how players approach the game, the goals of players, and just pushes people in a very, very bad direction. And I think the impact of that has been seen in the community overall. So Blizzard abandoning that is a very positive step in the right direction. But Blizzard abandoning a shitty system is not enough really to make an expansion good. Let's be clear, it's a positive step, but Shadowlands need it to be more than just that to be worth it. Just because you abandoned something that was really fucking terrible does not mean you get a pass. And that's something that I feel is worth saying about it. They've done something very positive, but something that shouldn't have happened in the first place. It's like as if with Warlords of Draen or Blizzard had decided, oh, we're going to make the garrison the central experience in the next expansion after WAD, and it's also and the uh, and we're not going to have anything else except garrison and raiding and dungeons, same as we did in Warlords of Draen. It's basically as if they had copied the central gameplay of Warlords of Draen or going forward. That would have been a disaster. They didn't. But for whatever reason, with Battle for Azeroth, they decided to stick with their guns, copy, uh, copying the same systems. I think it's because overall Legion was a success and they were thinking, well, we can, you know, do the same thing in BFA and it will work, right? No. Uh, so it does, does fix these issues. Now, that's for people that have played retail more recently and may have been angry about that. From that perspective, if you're just turned off by a while just purely because of that, it might be worth checking Shadowlands out. Uh, for people that are more classic oriented, I would say that Shadowlands is still the same retail World of Warcraft that frankly a lot of people do dislike. For me personally, I think the real issue 
that exists. And we can talk about, you know, how Blizzard has changed the game really since Wrath of the Lich King, because that's really the turning point. Wrath fundamentally changed the way the game is, the way the game is played, the way the game is designed. The core design philosophy of the game significantly changed and has stayed the same since Wrath. We just get, you know, flavoring really, be it Garrison's, Class Order Hall, now and now Torghast. But fundamentally the game is designed in a similar way. And the problem with what exists in the game since Wrath, and it didn't just happen all at once with Wrath of the Lich King, it was gradual. Some things happened in Wrath, some things came later. But the problem is that World of Warcraft turned from what was a largely multiplayer experience with an optional single player component. So basically you could play on your own, but you were heavily incentivized to play with other people. It turned from that into, in many ways, a solo experience with some optional multiplayer components, be it mythic dungeons or raiding. That's what WoW has become. And Blizzard has continued down this path. And the way they did this, well, in Wrath of the Lich King, you had far easier and convenient questing, so there was no reason to group up with other people. You're no longer benefiting, really, from grouping up with other people, except unless you're sharing tags, and even then they took that away with uh, shared mob tags later down the line. Uh, phasing, and then looking for a dungeon in Wrath of the Lich King, to looking for a raid in Cataclysm, and then sharding. Now, sharding is a really big problem as far as I see it, probably one of the biggest problems to the multiplayer experience that World of Warcraft offered, because before sharding, uh, especially in Vanilla and Brink Crusade, you would start at a point, there might be other people that start at the same point, and you're kind of leveling at the same pace with them, so you're seeing them you know, you're seeing them in the same zone, you may group up with them, and then, you know, 10 levels later, you're, say, an STV, and they're doing the same quest as you, and you group up, and there's, you know, a, a certain experience that you have with those kind of people, or you are leveling, and you're doing dungeons in, say, Vanilla or Burning Crusade, you're leveling, and, uh, and doing quite a lot of dungeons, and you keep seeing the same people, you know, every every different dungeon, like for Zulfrak, Marad, and etc., you're seeing the same people. And this, by the way, didn't end with Wrath of the Lich King. It really took a huge hit with sharding. Because with sharding, you're seeing far fewer people to begin with. And it's you're not seeing the same people every time. And I think sharding was particularly bad initially with Shadowlands. It really felt, when Shadowlands launched, it really felt like a solo experience. It was very rare to see anyone in the open world, even though on numerous servers, the lag was incredibly high, it was very difficult to actually log in, a queue was eventually added, a lot of servers suffered from instability. I play on Kazakh, my server was down for quite a significant amount of time, it was very difficult to log in. And not just on launch day, but for, uh, for quite a few days after. Now that's largely been resolved, but it certainly was an issue. And they've certainly reduced the number of shards. So you're actually seeing people in the open world nowadays, as opposed to just playing on your own. But I think the fact that they've gone for, they've dug their heels in on this solo experience is really a big problem. Because quite frankly, it's not bloody interesting. We don't play WoW for a single player experience. We play WoW for a multiplayer experience. Because at the end of the day, the single player experience, be it questing, storyline, all that, there are much better games out there. Many other RPGs that do it far, far better. What may, has made WoW a great game is because it's a massively multiplayer online game that we play with multiple people across different countries, potentially dependent on where you're living, in, what country you're living in, what region you're in. And that is very interesting, that social experience. Blizzard going in the exact opposite direction is a major problem. And I think it's a particularly big issue for Shadowlands because... Questing in itself has been very boring with a distinct lack of challenge and interesting gameplay for many years now. For all the uh, insane stunts we might pull off in some quests, overall it's very boring because there's no stakes. There's no risk of failure. Even if you die, you don't really pay a price for it. You have low repair costs overall, especially in Shadowlands, like the repair costs were pathetically low and it's a very easy recovery. So there's no stakes. There's no price. There's nothing. You're just going in there doing whatever quest you have to deal with without a real without any uh, chance of failure even if you do die you just go again without really losing anything and that's not really interesting it's very boring from a gameplay perspective it's really mind-boggling that what they've decided to do is double down on that so 
before you could level up, you know, you do quests, you do storyline, you might have be forced to do a portion of the storyline to get to the end game, right? To get access to certain end game mechanics. But what they've done here with Shadowlands is they force every person to level up largely by doing the storyline in each zone. And you have to do it, not just to level, but to actually access the end game. You have to do it to access Covenant, Storgast, and so on. So you have to experience the great, uh, the great storyline experience, which isn't fun on a gameplay level. And even on story level, it's not that much better to be, it, not, not that much better. I mean, I think the reason Blizzard did this, the reason Blizzard f is forcing people, at least on one character, to go through all of that, is because they want you to get acquainted with all new factions, races, characters, and their storylines. In fact, the whole leveling experience feels like a uh, introduction to all of these, because there's not really much going on there. It's really an introduction to the Jailer, the Maw, the Shadowlands, the Afterlives, the various factions, the Ventir, the Carrion, uh, the, Ar uh, the people of Ardenweald, all, and all that, and the houses of Maldraxxus. Uh, so you're introduced to them, but the story doesn't really finish or doesn't get to any point truly exciting for the most part. There are some high points. I'd say Maldraxxus was pretty decent, and I'd say Ardenweald had uh, had an emotional impact because of the way the story is handled there. Uh, because if you're going to make a story about the afterlife where many souls are risking oblivion because of the Jailer's actions and Sylvanas' actions, then you need to get the player involved in that. The player has to have a stake in what's going on. The player has to give a crap about what's going on for, from a story perspective because otherwise, what's the point? And I think the Arden Wield is really the only point where they really succeed in that as far as I'm concerned. Otherwise, it's pretty boring, bland, and honestly, a lot of it is forgettable. I'd say the worst part, story-wise, is you are spending a lot of time initially in Bastion, and Bastion just drags on as a zone. It really just drags on. And overall, the fact that you're being forced to do this, to actually unlock the multiplayer content, yes, you can do some dungeons. It's generally like one dungeon per zone. You only get access to one dungeon per zone while leveling. The fact that you are very limited in doing dungeons and that player interactions, you know, dynamic player interactions are very, were very limited because of sharding, I'd say that made for a pretty terrible uh, experience while leveling. So there's that. And I mention this because I'm sure a lot of people that might want to pick up Shadowlands will not enjoy dealing with this, right? Will not enjoy the quest experience, the leveling experience is very boring, it's bland, very bland. It doesn't prepare people for anything that's going to happen. It's, I mean, what's the value of it? Like, I, I really don't understand Blizzard's mentality to an extent, really, in making things so pathetically easy, so convenient for anyone. Not, no stakes, no challenge, no degree of skill required. I mean, most games, regardless of difficulty or t talking on, unless it's very easy, most games will require people to commit some amount of effort, except time, which all of them do, will require people to commit some amount of effort to actually complete. World of Warcraft feels the exact opposite. You can complete the storyline, you can level to 60 without really any skill, any uh, real challenge to overcome, except you spending a decent amount of time. And I feel that's a problem. So leveling, pretty bad. Uh, questing, pretty bad. But that's been the case for quite a few years now. I just find it mind-boggling, as I said, that they double down on it and are forcing people to at least go once for all of this. Now, on alts, uh, it's a better picture because you can skip that. You don't have to do this. If you're leveling an alt character, you can level in a more traditional way. You can do a lot of dungeons on that. So you're not forced to do it uh, on an alt character, but you do have to do it on your initial character, on your main character. Uh, so you have to go through this at least once, which might turn off a lot of people. It's certainly, uh, it's certainly been a turnoff to some of the people I've spoken with. It was, it was a grind. It really was a grind and not a fun one to get through, uh, to be quite honest. Now, at a max level, things do change because once you do unlock everything, once you do unlock the Ma, Torghast, Covenants, uh, Dungeons, World Quests, the game significantly expands. And that's when things get interesting. When it comes to world quests, uh, 
you don't really have to do much of them, to be honest. The only po reason why I'm doing world quests is either because I'm given a daily quest from my covenant to do some specific world quest for a reward or for anima. Those are the only two reasons why I even bother right now with world quests. So world quests feel kind of tacked on, really. Like They just feel like, oh, we had this feature in this previous expansion, so we're going to keep it here, at least for most of the zones. Uh, the Maw is an exception, but the Maw operates on a different principle. Um, then you have the Covenant system. And what the Covenant system feels to me like is they're trying to bring back the magic, I guess, of the Class Order hole. The issue with the Covenant system is there are significant gameplay bonuses for each Covenant, but uh, each class or each spec feels like they have one or two really good Covenants for them. Uh, and others aren't anywhere near as great. So you're kind of pigeonholed down a particular path or that one or of two paths uh, that are worth it and others aren't. For instance, personally, like I would prefer joining the Maldraxxus Covenant, uh, but I'm basically forced to join Bastion, you know, the Carrion, the Ascended. And I don't particularly care much for the Ascended from a story perspective. There's no real connection just because Bastion was such a boring zone to go through. Uh, but Bastion is a really strong covenant gameplay-wise for me as a protection uh, paladin with a retribution aspect. I know, you know, a lot of guides say the Ventir are really strong because of their ability and all that. I'm like, I gain a chain lightning ability on Avenger Shield or Judgment, dependent on my spec. That is incredibly powerful, especially for what I'm doing right now, which is you know, dungeons, Torghast, uh, open world stuff. Uh, open world farming, initial grinding, you know, later down the line when I'm purely just raiding, sure, it might be very different. Uh, I'd say very importantly, though, there is an end in sight. Like, there is a grind, there is always a grind, but there is an end in sight to the grind. As I mentioned, there's no more endless farming, there is an end, you can see it from the very start. Okay, I'll need to farm um, X amount of anima or I'll need to farm X amount of resources, but then I'll be done. And so that's great. Uh, it is better, much better than what we, we've had over the last couple of years, what they've decided to do with, uh, with Shadowlands. What might be an endless grind could be Torghast, but we have to say, wait and see how that fully develops. But so far, even that, uh, that uh, is limited. Now, with the Covenants, you do feel pigeonholed, and uh, it does feel like they're trying to replicate what the Class Order Hold did for them in Legion. The issue is... The class order hole was really compelling for m most people, I imagine, because it was tailored for each class, right? So you're a paladin, you get paladin content, and it's appropriate, and it feels interesting for you playing a paladin, so much so that you don't really care that too much that you're missing out on, you know, say, the demon hunter stuff or the warrior stuff. And I think that is uh, that was a big draw in Legion, that... What you were doing was pretty fun and pretty interesting and was really appealing to you as a player of that class. Now, with the Covenants, you have this disconnect where you're really going to be picking a Covenant for a gameplay reason, but you might not give a crap about the story involved in that Covenant or what that Covenant is about. And I feel that's a pretty big disconnect and, a, and an issue, really. Uh, yes, you can leave your Covenant, but again, you are you get some very strong abilities dependent on the Covenant, so you don't really, unless you want to be at a severe disadvantage, you don't really have that choice, to be quite frank about it. And that, I do feel, is, is an issue. Uh, but, you know, the traditional stuff feels, you know, you know, a lot of the traditional stuff kind of feels tacked on, and I, I guess, like, the Covenants are more traditional than anything else. I mean, yes, they're, a, you know, they're, they're similar to the class order hold, they're a take, they're a variety of that. It's not anything we haven't seen before. Uh, mythic dungeons, I'd say mythic dungeons and dungeons in general, some of them are very interesting. Some of them have fairly interesting mechanics and uh, complexities we haven't really seen before in regular dungeons. From normal difficulty in some places to heroic to mythic, there are certainly... Uh, a lot more interesting stuff going on in some dungeons than it was before. The issue I have with it is there are some dungeons where there is not the case. And especially in in uh, some of the leveling dungeons. Like I think Necrotic Wake is probably the most boring dungeon I've done in a long while. And that's in quite a bit. I mean, there's only one somewhat interesting mechanic where, you know, you, you have a boss that you have to hook off of platform. But 
that's pretty much it in terms of interesting stuff that's going on there. Oh, and you avoid AoE. Ooh, we haven't been doing that in World of Warcraft for the last 15 years. Thanks, Blizzard. Uh, move out of fire, everyone. Uh, but with other dungeons like the Mists, with Sanguine Depths, uh, with the other... Um, uh, with, with some of the other dungeons, you do get far more interesting and complex mechanics of the likes we haven't really seen before. And I think that's a very positive step uh, towards making things interesting. It's not just mythic difficulty. And I do always have an issue, and I've had an issue with World of Warcraft, where uh, the highest difficulty is the only one that's relevant and everything beyond uh, below that is pretty much irrelevant and a complete joke. It doesn't really feel like that in Shadowlands, at least past normal difficulty. And even with normal, the higher level dungeons, the higher level dungeons, the max level dungeons, uh, can actually be pretty interesting even on normal until you completely outgear them. Again, I've never been fond of uh, multiple difficulties in dungeons, uh, but I do feel that they've tried to make things interesting, at least once you get through the initial slog of leveling, they've tried to make things uh, interesting that, and they've minimized the annoying stuff. Like, yeah, you still have to do some open world farming, but it's not as mandatory. What does feel mandatory is with the Maw. So in the Maw, it's... A daily questing zone really of its own kind where you're farming a significant amount of currency for the vendor items and the reputation with that vendor so we're going to be doing quite a bit of farming with that but the maw is different in that when it's far more risky there is an actual challenge in there even though you'll be killing a lot of enemies with ease uh, the more you kill the more attention you attract the more attention you attract the deadlier the zone gets you'll be hunted and there is a risk with that because the currency you're farming, you can lose some of that if you die. So it feels like Dark Souls from that perspective. You're risking yourself for the sake of this currency and the amount of risk um, that you're willing to take, you know, depends on how brave you are, how much, how far you're willing to go. So there is a risk reward in the mod and that makes it certainly more interesting than the regular stuff. And it, in many ways, like the Ma and Torghast, like they feel so much more interesting than the base game, like the base stuff, like World Quest, Covenant, all that. It's like, if I could spend the, the entire expansion just doing Torghast, I, I'd be fine with that, to be honest, because I feel Torghast, for instance, is a lot more interesting. Well, Torghast, Mythic Dungeons, and Raiding, I feel that would be a lot more interesting than worrying about the Bloody Covenants to unlock some story content that may not be good to begin with, or worrying about doing the Covenants, and you have to do the Covenants, because you, uh, because they give you character power. So they improve your character power, so you're forced to do them, but just real feel, feel it's tedious because it's nothing new, it's nothing fresh, it's not nothing exciting. Whereas with the mod, there is some excitement, there is some challenge, there's, there is a risk there. There are some stakes in that, which are completely lacking in other portions of the game, but there are stakes in the mod. And then there's Torghast, a randomized dungeon. An infinite dungeon, as they've called it, though there is a limit to how much you can do, how many layers of each zone and this dungeon you can do. So there's various zones with different layers, but there is a limit to how many rewards you can get. But Torghast does feel very refreshing and very interesting. Look, if Blizzard is going to make WoW a solo experience with an optional multiplayer mode, then they might as well double down on that, right? And they've doubled down in the worst way possible with the level experience, but they've also given us Torghast, which is a very solid experience to do on your own. It's fun. It's random. You get different abilities, different upgrades, different anima powers, different enemies, different bosses in every wing, in every layer of each zone. And so that is certainly an ex interesting experience to go through compared to the usual stuff that we usually get. I'd say it's probably... Uh, since Blizzard does make things based on the core design philosophy that they've had since Wrath by just adding some sprinkling of Orbea garrisons or artifact power, I'd say it's the most interesting take that they've had on World of Warcraft in quite a lot of years. And I think it's really showing there is a great deal of enjoyment to be had if you care about that kind of stuff. If you're willing to stomach the grinding, if you're willing to go through the horrible leveling experience... Um, that does have some good moments, but you know, so the Wrath of the Lich King have good moments like the Battle of Light's Hope or the Wrath Gate. There were always good moments, high points, but there's also a lot of boring, tedious stuff to deal with. And, well, with Shadowlands, there's a lot of tedious stuff to deal with while leveling, but there's a lot of excitement to be had once you get max level, even if you're playing on your own. 
don't have to worry too much about uh, gain, you know, joining a guild, trying to get go through the trials of joining a decent guild or any of that. I think one of the biggest problems that exists right now on retail is there's such a disparity between new players or you know people that are trying to find uh, to get on their feet and people who have been playing the game for a long time. And maybe Torghast will serve as a bridge. Like the bridge used to be that raiding had raids of different uh, difficulty and you you know, different steps, basically, on a stair. And, you know, the highest the highest point was, you know, Sunwell Plateau and Burning Crusade. The lowest was Karazhan. But a player could walk, uh, uh, could climb those steps and get from point A to point B. When, whereas on retail, there's just such a disparity between normal dungeons, heroic dungeons, mythic dungeons, and, you know, various rating difficulty is that it's very, very difficult. There is a segregation, really, of the player base. So, who knows, maybe Torghast, which is a solo challenge that is compelling, but actually uh, has genuine risk in it, uh, in a way that also isn't annoying. Yes, you can lose, but at the end of the day, what are you losing, really? Right? You might not get... You, you can always go back, and you're not really losing that much, necessarily, except your time, I guess. But you do have to actually overcome a genuine challenge. Um, you do actually have to perform to a certain degree to overcome the challenge. You have to possess a certain degree of skill to go through it. And I think that makes it very compelling. And I think it might serve as a training ground of sorts for a lot of people. Because there's a lot of mechanics in Torghast that people will be dealing with that would help them quite a bit in a raiding environment. And I certainly think that Torghast is... Uh, certainly a very good idea. We'll see how it works in the long term, but as far as I'm concerned, on that alone, you know, I, you know, Torghast one, Torghast was one of the big reasons, one of the big pluses that I saw with Shadowlands before it launched, and I think so far from what I've played of the of the game so far, I think Blizzard is trying really hard to redeem themselves after years of abysmal failure, and I think they might just succeed with this one. We'll have to wait and see how it all ends up going. But so far, I, I've had a positive, um, I, I, I've had a positive experience playing the game at max level. Not so much getting there, but at max level, it's been fairly positive. So, I would recommend it if you can stomach the leveling. Quasine here on Serious Gaming signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications.